Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, one of the things I've always liked doing is uh, collecting and reading music fanzines and magazines. And today I'm going to show you a sample from my uh, collection. Uh, they've always been a good source of information on new bands that you've not heard of before. And now with the internet and YouTube especially, uh, it's great to reread some of the old magazines and discover acts that uh, you didn't know about at the time and you can investigate further just by a click of a button. So I'll take you f um, through a few of these. First one, Omaha Rainbow. This was around in the 1980s, well 1970s into the 1980s and it's a uh, country singer-songwriter uh, magazine and it's uh, Flaco Jimenez on the cover and I'll show you the contents page and the best article well, they're all good articles but this one may well be of interest uh, Tom Petty and what I particularly liked about uh, Omaha Rainbow was the chart that was published in every issue. And I'm assuming this was the editor, Peter O'Brien's uh, records that he was listening to at the time. And uh, this is uh, the chart. There's lots of well-known acts included there, but uh, I've noted down a few names that I'm going to check out on uh, YouTube uh, that I don't know much about at all. So Terence Boylan on Asylum, uh, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band who were on uh, Scotty Brothers label and Randy Burns on uh, Mercury. Next up, a Scottish, uh, Scottish uh, fanzine from the 1970s. Uh, hot wax and on the front cover it's uh, Jackson Brown um, unlike the last magazine this one doesn't uh, tend to feature uh, interviews it's more um, people talking about um, artists careers so for example this is Barry Melton from Country Joe and the Fish. Um, I also love looking at uh, old adverts in these magazines. And uh, on the back, you've got an album by uh, Wigwam, Finnish prog rock band. And uh, the small ads can be interesting as well. And if this is going to pick up okay. Uh, amongst the small ads, somebody is selling uh, every issue of Sounds, the weekly newspaper, from uh, issue number one in October 1970 through to uh, September 1973. Uh, and also I've noticed there's a, an advert here placed by uh, Lindsay Hutton. Um, he'll crop up again soon. And bearing in mind this magazine came out in um, April 1976. Uh, he was really on the ball because he's put in an advert for punk rock albums and singles, almost anything in that category. And, and talking of punk, this is a fanzine that's come out in February 1977, Nuggets. And it's got uh, the Plummet Airlines on the front cover. And at that point, they just had one single released on uh, Stiff Records. Uh, contents page. They didn't, this magazine didn't really embrace uh, punk, but um, 
a lot of the acts that were on labels such as Stiff and, and um, the pub rock bands that sort of got their break in 1977 are covered. So there's a nice, for example, a nice article on uh, the Kurzel Flyers advert for a record shop. That must have been very interesting. It's on Oldham Road in Manchester, long gone now. George Davenport's Country Music Centre. It's a sample of the reviews page, the sort of stuff they were covering at the time. And next up we've got That Will Never Happen Again. And this was put out by the Phil Spector Appreciation Society and uh, the editors are uh, Mick Patrick, who uh, put together a number of um, girl band compilations for various record labels. And it's got... Uh, Twinkle on the front cover and it's a nicely laid out magazine and it's got uh, for example that's the uh, part of the article on Twinkle. Next up we've got uh, the 20th anniversary issue of the next big thing and this was uh, edited by Lindsay Hutton who I mentioned a bit earlier um, and this came with my copy It's a, a limited edition of a thousand. There are good articles in this magazine, and that's just a, a sample page for you to look at. Ronnie Dawson. And a few adverts in here. Uh, this is for a, a record label which uh, released some really good stuff. Lance Rock Records, which has released stuff by. Um, the Nomads, uh, The New Christs, and The Fastbacks, all bands that I really loved in the 1990s. Uh, back to 1978 and a fanzine that came out in September, October 1978. And on the front cover, we've got uh, Reckless Eric and uh, loads of interesting articles uh, including a band that straddled the psych era in the 60s and then re-emerged in the late 70s uh, the red crayola and amongst the reviews i thought this was uh, interesting this was um the label that uh, brian eno started up in the late 70s obscure records so there's reviews of the first 10 releases on uh, Obscure Records. Right, moving from fanzines, I've got, uh, I picked this up at a car boot sale for just a few pence, and it's uh, Kerrang, which is a heavy metal magazine, uh, which is still going now, but this is a very early issue, and uh, from 1982, issue 14, with uh, Richie Blackmore on the front cover. And uh, obviously it's all sort of classic rock and uh, metal bands. Um, that's uh, quite a nice interview with uh, Cozy Pal. This little advert for uh, a Hawkwind LP. And this is a, a Power Pop magazine that came out in 1992. And uh, I really, after buying this, I really got into uh, the 1990s Power Pop bands, uh, especially Material Issue, who became uh, my favorite band for a while. Uh, there's various articles in here. And. Uh, Here we've got interview. Whoops, let's get that right. An interview with uh, Mike Gibbons from Badfinger, and uh, the review section is especially good because uh, it covers loads of uh, bands that. Uh, is that coming up? Yeah, it covers uh, loads of bands that um, I still haven't heard of. So I've made a note of, for example, Made for Electra. 
the mutts, the tearaways, the blow pops, uh, the bobbies. And there's probably loads more as well, which I'm going to check out um, on the internet on YouTube. And uh, this was a, a good fanzine. It sort of straddled. It started before punk, and um, this is from that transition period. Uh, this is August 1978, uh, Dark Star. So although they never embraced sort of English punk bands, they did start covering some newer acts as well. Uh, so, so for example, uh, Tom Petty, The Ruben Ooze. That's the contents page. There's a number of nice interviews, including with... Uh, Ian Matthews and uh, this is interesting as a this had just been released on uh, Aura label in the UK first time it had been released a uh, big star the third album so and uh, in the review section load, loads of reviews And uh, this is an interesting one. It came out in 2001, Fish Rap. This is the only uh, issue of this magazine I've ever seen, but uh, um, I don't know what other other issues, they, uh, other topics they covered, but this is devoted entirely to um, the then unreleased album by the Beach Boys, Smile. And um, on page two, There's a, an advert for a limited edition lithograph signed by uh, the artist who uh, did the cover for Smile. And um, then there's articles on each of the uh, tracks that would have been on the album. So that's just a sample page. It's a really professionally done magazine. It's got some... Um, well-known experts on, on the Beach Boys involved as well. So Dominic uh, Priori, who writes about Do You Like Worms? And David Dalton, who writes about uh, Good Vibrations. Yeah, it's a beautifully laid out magazine. So just to give you a flavor of what's there. So The Many Moods of Murray Wilson. Yeah, I'm really uh, pleased I picked that one up. So, uh, if you're trying to find uh, old music magazines and fanzines, uh, you can buy them fairly easily these days on, on eBay, and but the prices are, are, are starting to get a bit uh, silly, really. But I'm sure there's bargains still to be had out there on eBay. But I still like to try and find them uh, at car boot sales or record fairs. So let me know in the comments below what you think about fanzines. Do you collect them yourself? Uh, do you use them as a, a resource to find out about uh, uh, bands you've not heard of before? And uh, do you wish there were still uh, more paper fanzines out there? Uh, it seems that uh, with the coming of the internet, it's become um, a dying art form, which is quite sad. There's a lot of uh, journalists... Uh, music journalists got their start in fanzines and the enthusiasm of the writing is what makes them so great. So anyway, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.